So you were given an example at the top of this quiz on how to fill out an area model diagram. And so putting the different place values along the top and then side and then multiplying the two values together to put the product inside the box. So the first question asked you to go ahead and figure out well, what is the area of the already labeled boxes. So for A, what is this worth? You want 1 times 2. So A is worth 2. For B, it asks you to go 1 times 4 tenths, which would be 4 tenths. C had you multiply 3 tenths by 2. 3 times 2 is 6. There is one decimal point in the problem, so we're going to have 1 in the answer. And then here we have 3 tenths times 4 tenths, which would be 12 tenths, or in this case when we write that, that would be 12 hundredths. So that would be the solutions in the, uh, in the quiz. It was okay if you went ahead and put a 0 in front of the decimal place values, either one is an acceptable option. Um, I just never include them because to me, it's consider I see it as an unnecessary number, but if your comfort zone is to put a zero in front when you have whole, no whole numbers, a-okay, go for it. Here, it then gave us the blank places where we would label our diagrams and you had to determine which one of the values went where. So our first term was four and two tenths. So in the A would be the whole number value. Uh, a good way to indicate that is the biggest boxes represent the whole values. The rectangles are representing tenths, the smaller squares representing the hundredths. So the four would go in the A location. B is going to be made up of the two tenths. Again, if you put a zero in front of that, it's completely acceptable. I just don't. And then along the side here, C would be worth one whole and D would be worth eight tenths. So then connected to that is, okay, well, what are the solutions to both of these? If we take and add these values up, all that matters when we're doing area models or when we're um, dealing with adding decimals is our decimal places are lined up. So we had a two, we had a four tenths, we had a six tenths, and we had twelve hundredths. So when I add those together, my hundredths is a two, my tenths is an eleven, so I carry the one of that into the, the whole numbers, and oh, helps if I write the correct number, and I put in two decimals. All right, there we go, multitasking, not so good. So three and twelve hundredths. Then over here, when we do these area models, if we have 4 and 1 and 8 tenths and 0.2, so 4 times 1 is going to be 4, 1 times 2 tenths is going to be 2 tenths, 4 times 8 is 20, uh, oh, no, 32 actually, I messed up there, and then there was one decimal place in the problem, so I need one decimal place in my answer, and then 8 times 2 is going to give me 16, and I had two decimal places in the problem, so I need 2 in the answer. Now I need to go and start adding all of these values up. I have a 4, a 3, and 2 tenths. I have a 2 tenths, and I have a 16 hundredths. So when I add that up, all of my place values are lined up appropriately. I bring the 6 down, 2 plus 2 plus 1 gives me 5, and 4 plus 3 gives me 7. So 7 and 56 hundredths would be our answer. Question 5 asks you to find the product of 6 and 8 tenths and 2 and 7 tenths. You had two different. You had a couple different ways you can do this. We'll use the area model and the traditional method. I don't care which method you choose. I just need you to explain your process so I can understand how you went about it. So if I use the area model, I would say, oh, I set it up where six and eight tenths on the top and two and seven tenths on the bottom. Two times six for twelve. Two times eight for sixteen. And there was one decimal place in the problem. One in the answer. 6 times 7 is going to be 42, one decimal place in the problem, so I need 1 in the answer. And 7 times 8 is going to be 56, and there were two decimal places in the problem, 2 in the answer. I line all of my, I have four numbers being added together, so I line my decimals up and I plug my numbers in around that. 4 and 2, 
one and six, 56. Okay, and then I could add my hundreds up. I have six, and then we have two plus six plus five uh, to get, is that eight? 13, carry the one. So one plus two for three, plus four for seven, plus one for eight, and then I bring the 10 down. So 18 and 36 hundredths. So I got that. I got, you could also say I did the regular multiplication method, lined it up vertically, ignored the decimals until the end. So we can go seven times eight, 56, carry the five, seven times six, 42, plus five, 47. Then we move over and down. Some people put a zero, I like the arrow. Two times eight for 16, carry the one. Two times six plus one gives us 13. So then we add it all up, six, 13, carry the one, four and one and three for eight and a one. So I get uh, 1,836. Then I go back and figure out, well, how many decimal places were in the original problem? Two. So I need to have two in my answer to get 18 and 36 hundredths. No matter what, as long as our math is accurate, we can get the same answer. So again, I don't care which you choose, just give me an explanation of what you choose, chose and kind of your process for setting it up and solving. This last question asks you to do the same using smaller numbers. I probably switch, should have switched the two problems, but I didn't, too late. Let's continue on. So area model or regular multiplication method? One times three for three, Three times five for 15, one decimal place in the problem, one in the answer. One times one tenth is one tenth. One times five is five, but I have two decimal places in this, so I need a decimal zero so that there are two decimal places in that, leaving me with three, 1.5, one tenth, and five hundredths. So then I can add it all up. Five, five and one is six. Three and one is four, so four and 65 five hundredths. Over here, we could do the regular multiplication, drop the decimals until we're all done. Five times one for five, five times three for 15. Then down and over, one times one for one, one times three for three. Add up our products. And I have two decimal places all together in the problem, so I need two in my answer to get four and 65 hundredths. Again, doesn't matter, just tell me which one you chose and how you went about solving it that way.